Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to paint a shiny metal armor. So without further ado, let's get into it. At first, I did not make any line art but created a silhouette based on the shape of the headgear. I have chosen this headgear because it looks interesting and fun to paint. So basically I used three shades of grey for different parts of the helmet. The reason behind it was to make things easier for me when I shade it later. I could just select a specific part by using the magic wand tool. In that way, the shedding process can go much smoother. As I have mentioned before that I have not drawn any line art, so I have used the eraser tool and the liquify pens to properly sculpt it. The brush I have used for initial coloring was pen fed. Change the background from white to darker gray because that way I can analyze the color better. After applying the color more or less similar way to the reference, it's just me fixing everything using the liquify pens. Now that we have our defined shapes ready, I'm just going to take a new layer and then with the help of magic wand tool, I'm going to add the light and shadows on the different parts of the helmet. For this part, I have used the chalk brush with steel plate texture. First, I started with the parts which are not too light or not too dark. The thing you have to remember when painting metal that is some parts will be darker and some parts will be lighter in a gradient like way. Not every part of the metal will be highly contrasting except for the super highlighted and the super dark areas. You can start by using a desaturated dark blue or desaturated yellow or you can just start with grayscale and later on add color to it just like this. The plan here is to start with lighter shadows and darker highlights. I know it sounds kind of weird but in short I mean to say we are going to use gray colors with less contrast in the highlights and in the shadows. I have used several different layers for adding shading to the different parts. I think I have probably used 4 or 5 layers for shading. I'm sure that you can see the gradations are being created on the different surfaces. Lighter, darker, then lighter again and darker again. Among those gradations, some will be very brightly illuminated and some will have really dark shadows. 
if you can pinpoint on the exact part where the light is being reflected very brightly then you would be able to figure out where to add the light and shadows properly i have used a reference here so the easiest way would be having a reference with you to understand the light and shadows but if you want to create something without any reference then you have to figure out where do you want the light to fall on remember that the light source is very important here armors are usually polished metal surface that's why the light reflects brightly to make it look shiny so the parts around the strong highlights also get illuminated a lot but softly to show that brightest part we need to use highlights with hard edge and for the surrounding part we need to show the soft highlights and for that we can use airbrush if the metal surface is not so polished then the highlights won't be that strong So this is where I started adding the fine details to show that the plates are divided from one to other I have used borders For this borders do not just use plain black or white color use a combination Generally the edges of those metal plates are rounded to show that we are going to use lighter color on the top of the border and add darker color at the both sides of it that way we would be able to show that the lines are round or cylindrical i would like to say something for the beginners if you are intimidated by the painting process then you can try using the satin tool from the effects menu it will be easier but if you can practice this procedure i would highly recommend you to go for painting it organically it's definitely worth it now i am just going to keep adding more fine details until i am satisfied and then i am going to get back for another segment Now that I'm adding highlights to the edges, notice that I'm not trying to be perfect. That is on purpose because I want to show that the headgear has been used a lot in different wars. So the edges are not really in proper condition anymore.
before moving on to a very interesting segment i'm going to quickly add the highlights with hard edges i have used pen fade for that now that we are practically done with everything it's time for moving on to the next segment that is going to be the cracks on the surface adding cracks to the surface is actually really easy first you need to think where you are going to add those and how thick you want them to be usually the thicker cracks happen around the edges so what you are going to do is take any brush of your wish i have used the pen fed brush make sure that the opacity and the thickness of the brush ends are zero after you add the base color figure out the bottom surface of the crack then add lighter color to show the reflection the very middle part of the crack is going to be the darkest as it's the deepest part gradually the colors around it is going to be lighter the top surface is going to be darker compared to the bottom surface and that's it that's the way you can introduce cracks on the surface without making it look awkward so let me show you more cracks i have added so that it becomes an easier concept for you guys i'm going to keep following the same process of adding the base color first then dividing it into two halves one is going to be darker and one is going to be lighter remember the surrounding color of the cracks so depending on the surrounding color you are going to change the light and shadows intensity Now that you know how it works I will quickly do some more cracks and then going to move on to add colors For coloring it I'm going to take a new layer and clip it The blending mode is going to be color You can also use overlay both are good options I thought of making it golden with a hint of rust on it So some parts are going to be reddish and the rest of is going to be golden. You can choose any brush that you use to paint. I have used pen fed brush once again. To make things more interesting, now I'm going to use a blood stain pattern to show some of the rusty parts. 
I'm adding this roast because of aesthetic purpose. If you don't want to, you don't have to. If you want your armor to look brand new without any cracks, that is also fine. These cracks and the rust is just something I wanted to add personally. I tried and tested different blending modes to see which one fits the most. You can also do that or if you just want to go for the most common option, you can just choose overlay or soft light. As a finishing touch, I have taken this free picture of scratched metal surface texture from Google. I have turned the blending mode into soft light so that it properly blends into the picture. Then to make the colors more saturated and bright, I copied the color layers and changed the blending modes after going through some trials and errors. If I wanted, I could have ended it here, but I kept thinking of something extra. For example, you know, there are some pretty designs on those medieval armors. I really wanted to do that, but I was too lazy to paint it all by myself. So I just got this preset pattern from the gallery and added it to one side of the helmet. So this is how it looks like after all those post-production stuff. I hope you enjoyed the painting process and got to learn how to paint metal armors or any shiny metal surface using Ibis Pentex. Let me know if you have any questions. And also let me know your feedbacks. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Till then, take care.